Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Master Brad and welcome to the final FIFA 19 career mode series on this channel. By the time we finish this series, which should be in around 15 or 16 episodes, we will be starting the FIFA 20 content. I can't believe how close it is, but you guys will know from the thumbnail and the title, we are taking over the Saints, Southampton FC in the Premier League. You guys may have also noticed on the thumbnail, there's a handsome looking manager. And that, guys, is me. Changed it up a little bit with the thumbnail. Decided to put myself into the thumbnail as well as two other players. Make it a little bit different. And I can also confirm, a lot of you have been asking, Brad, are we going to see face cam in FIFA 20? Well, what I can tell you guys is certainly not the start of this Saints career mode. But towards the end, there will be one or two episodes that will include face cam. And the reason I'm doing that is so in this FIFA 19 series, I can practice learning to, first of all, record with face cam practice how to edit with face cam and also make sure that it's lined up nicely with the actual gameplay itself i'll be using this time to practice so hopefully then in fifa 20 i can incorporate face cam non-stop so it'll be in every single episode but certainly at the start of the fifa 20 career mode guys or whichever career mode we do whatever team we're at there won't be face cam but i'll certainly be throwing the odd episodes in there with it so i can get used to it i'll also put on screen now something that i put on the community page when i confirmed i was going to be southampton's manager for the final fifa 19 career mode series i did also confirm that i will be using face cam whether it's in the middle whether it's at the end it certainly won't be at the start we want to get things kicked off nicely and i don't want it where it's delaying us i want to get the series rolling and then we can look at bringing face cam in because guys from the time you're seeing this video which should be the 14th of august another 15 videos from me and fifa 20 will be dropping which is just absolutely unbelievable i can't believe fifa 20 is only five or six weeks away now. That is unbelievable. I'm so excited to get the FIFA 20 content kicked off. But the reason we are taking over the Saints is as I put my, or click my fingers and put on screen for you guys now the straw poll, you can see I asked what team should we manage for our final FIFA 19 career mode. Liverpool and Manchester City are not included as we have already done these teams or done career modes with both of these teams. Obviously, we've done City in the one season wonder and we've obviously done three seasons at Liverpool. I didn't include these two teams just in case you voted for them again because I know what some people are like. I've seen lots of comments saying since Brad's a Liverpool fan, vote for Manchester United. I am grateful I don't have to do Manchester United. If they'd have won... Well, I'd have done them. Fair is fair. But I just know that some people wanted me to the United just because I'm a Liverpool fan. And as you guys know, Liverpool fans playing as Man United or Manchester United fans, they just don't get on. It'd be like mixing coffee with tomato sauce. It just doesn't go. But that leaves Southampton at the top. You'll be able to see on screen now, Southampton won with eight votes. We have Manchester United in second with six votes. In third place, we have Bournemouth with five and as we move down to fourth, we've got a joint position fourth with Chelsea, Leicester and Wolves on two votes. And then in fifth position, we've got joint Arsenal, Cardiff City, Everton and Spurs with one vote. Whoever voted for Everton, you cheeky bugger. Obviously, I don't want to be doing Everton either because, of course, I'm a Liverpool fan. But whichever team would have won, guys, I would have been doing no problem. But you guys have voted, you guys have spoken, and it does mean we are going to be taking on the Saints, who I believe... Are a mid-table team, do need a little bit of rebuilding, do need strengthening in some positions, so it will certainly be good to take over Southampton and potentially do what we've done at Liverpool, whether we'll be able to get, you know, top six, top eight, top ten in the first season, I'm not too sure. I am going to only be doing one season, guys, because by the time we finish this series, at the end of season one, I will be starting the FIFA 20 content. But to make it a little bit of a challenge for myself... First of all, we're not going to take the 30% increase. We're also not going to take the global transfer network. We're going to leave them completely blank and we're going to advance through to the next page. Obviously, we just mentioned earlier on that we will be taking over Southampton and it stands like this. We have a transfer budget of £39.5 million. The club worth is £863 million. We play at the St. Mary's Stadium. We have a white and red striped home kit. And we have a blue and yellow away kit. We're sponsored by Virgin Media. We can see the domestic success is medium. Continental success is low. Brand exposure is medium. Financial is high. And youth development is also high. Now, as we talk about the youth development, some of the players that Southampton have had and come through the rankings have been unbelievable. We know that we've had the Liverpool man at the right back, Nathaniel Klein, who sadly was great at Liverpool at the start. He was then put out from inj injury, sorry. He was then put out to Bournemouth on loan. He hasn't really got back into the team, but certainly a great player when we first signed him. They also took 
Toby Alderweireld, some of you may not know this, but Spurs' centre-back, Toby Alderweireld, was on loan from Atletico Madrid to Southampton. And the reason Spurs bought him is because of how well he defended at Southampton. So you may not have knew that, but you certainly do. Now, another player, now obviously most of these players I'm going to talk about have probably gone to Liverpool or have been at Liverpool because realistically, that's the way it used to work. The player would do well at Southampton, they'd then be put on an escalator, which come all the way to Liverpool, and then we sign them. Because the next man is Virgil van Dijk. We signed him for £75 million and what a bargain that was. Southampton thought they were getting great money for him. It was great money back in the day, but now he's easily a centre-back worth well upwards of £100 million. The next one is a left-back, went to Manchester United. That man, the Englishman, is Luke Shaw, another great player. We've got another Englishman, in fact. They've had a few Englishmen. We've got the Ox, who now is at Liverpool. He used to be at Southampton. Theo Walcott, another Englishman who's now out at Everton. Did go to Arsenal from the Saints. We've had the big man at Real Madrid who certainly doesn't get on with Zidane right now. You guys have called it. Gareth Bale, the Welshman, was absolutely unbelievable at Southampton. Our left winger at Liverpool, Sadio Mane. Show me the Mane. Used to be at Southampton. And also the man running teams ragged right now at Ajax who didn't do too well at Southampton. He was okay, but he certainly upped his game at Ajax. And that man is Dusan Tadic. So what we know from talking about those players, a lot of them were at Southampton when they were super young. The Ox was there at 17, 18, Walcott was. None of these players were at Southampton when they were coming into their prime. Southampton seemed to bring players through the rankings, have them dead young, and sell them off for a lot of money. And I understand that because it helps pay the wages of the other players. And it's also very hard for a mid-top, mid-to-top table team, really, Southampton. They're normally finishing between 8th and, say, 14th. It's very hard for them to keep hold of class players like that because they just don't have the money. They couldn't be paying Gareth Bale 400 grand a week. They just can't afford it. But they are some of the players that have come through the rankings and have certainly gone on to become absolutely superstars, especially the likes of Van Dijk and Gareth Bale, without a doubt. So I am excited to get into this career mode with Southampton. Let's go ahead and select them down now. Now, what we're going to do now, guys, is this is all the boring stuff. We know that we're going to go this manager and we're going to be in a shirt and tie. This stuff you don't want to see. You don't want to see me saving the game and all that. So I'm going to completely cut this out. We're going to get into the Southampton at the central. We're going to have taken over them and stuff. And then we'll start building the foundation of this Southampton team. But what I'm most excited for is me and the Saints lads. Now I thought I'd best leave this idiot. Obviously you guys have seen this page plenty of times. We're going to stay on legendary. Five minutes each half. Currency in stale and transfer window is enabled. And obviously European competitions is enabled, although we're not in either of them. The next thing I want to show you guys, um, and I thought I'd leave this in, is I spent two hours doing all the Premier League transfers. So any players that have been bought by a Premier League team or sold by a Premier League team have now been updated. Now I'm hoping by choosing initial squads, it's going to update to that. If it's not, I'm going to have to come back and play around with it. But unless a team has loaned a player or loaned out a player, I haven't bothered with the loanies. Just main players. Now, I'll go through some of them when we get into the Southampton career mode. But I brought most teams that have either bought a player or sold a player. I've made that happen. And I just thought it makes it a little bit more realistic. So any players that Southampton have sold or bought will be just like that in this career mode. Hopefully, initial squads should do that for me. But I have to be honest, I've never done this before. I tend to just go with current squads. So I'll get into the game and see whether that makes a difference. Right, and here we are at Southampton's Central. We've got five emails to go through, which we will in just a moment. But I am so glad when it comes to doing transfers, it worked. Because I panicked, guys. Obviously, I'll have cut all this out. But as I clicked to go into the Southampton career mode, it said, resetting to default transfers or something like that. And I was thinking, oh, no. I have just spent two hours transferring every player I can possibly think of and using the internet to find other players. And you're telling me it's going to reset. Luckily enough, it hasn't. I've just checked it. I went to Arsenal. And they've got David Luiz. They've got Nicolas Pepe. So I'm just going to roll off. Guys, got a list in front of me. Just a few players that have now gone to their current teams. Just to give you an idea. Not everyone's on here. It's just a few. So we've got Sebalos, who went from Real Madrid to Arsenal. Nicolas Pepe is at Arsenal. Malpai is at Brighton. Rodriguez is at Burnley. Hazard's gone to Real Madrid. Now, obviously, at the start of FIFA 19, Hazard was at Chelsea, but he's now gone to Real Madrid. McCarthy's gone to Palace from Everton. Maguire's at United. Danilo's gone to Juventus, in which Cancelo is now at City, because they swapped either way. 
Rodri's at City, Wan Bissaka is at United, Jolerton is at Newcastle, Andy Carroll is at Newcastle, Che Adams has come to Southampton, and then Dombele is at Spurs. Now, obviously, there was loads, guys. It took me two hours to move everyone. I just jotted a few names down so you guys get the idea. So, 95% of the current transfers that have happened in real life are now going to be at their actual teams. I only done the Premier League. I didn't do other leagues and stuff like that. So Griezmann isn't a Barcelona. I didn't think there was any point in doing that. I just wanted to do the Premier League. And any Premier League teams that sold players, I sold them to their correct team. And anyone that bought players, I bought them to the correct team. So, for example, like if you look at Spurs, they bought N. Dombele, so I brought him to Spurs. But they got rid of Kieran Trippier to Atletico Madrid. So, I've sent Kieran Trippier out to Atletico Madrid. And if we just check, we could use Trippier for an example. If we are to search for a player and we put in Trippier. Oh, Kieran Trippier. He should be, there you go. Kieran Trippier is out at Atletico Madrid, which is his real team that he's at right now. But at the start of FIFA 19, if you start at the Spurs career mode or any career mode, Kieran Trippier is at Spurs. So every Premier League transfer, pretty much 95% of them, has now happened. So if there's any players that you're thinking, Brad, why are they at the club? It's probably because they've actually gone. Also off camera, I accepted the invite to the European International Cup, which in our group right now, we have TSG Hoffenheim, we have Marseille, and we have Werder Bremen. So looking forward to getting into that. We need to look at the training. But first, let's jump over to the office and take a look at these emails. So as we go to the bottom, we have a scout, Lance Richardson. He's introducing himself. We all know this. We've been through it so many times. Here's the scout. The assistant manager. I don't need an assistant manager. I've got you guys at home that are my backroom staff. So let's not worry about that. The Southampton board have set our visions and expectations, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. Important transfer information, we're not worried about that. And obviously the board saying that obviously we've just joined the European International Cup. The players have just come back after a very draining and demanding season. So this is where we just give them a run out in pre-season and get them back to their ways. So let's go ahead and delete that. Our vision and expectations. Let's have a little look at the manager objectives. Now you guys might be thinking, are you going to do fan objectives for this series, Brad? The answer to that is no. I'm leaving fan objectives till FIFA 20. But as we look at youth development, which is a high... They want us to sign two youth players to the senior team in the same season they were scouted. Play them in at least 10 matches or either as part of the starting 11 or coming on as a sub. Again, we're probably not going to achieve that. I don't know how much I'm going to use the academy right now. This is where you guys have got to get involved down below in the comment section and let me know what you want me to do with Southampton and what path you would like me to take. They also want me to grow two youth academy players by at least 10 overall points. And as soon as they've grown, play them in five matches. So that is difficult. If we sign someone at 68 overall, we need to get them to 78 overall and then play them in five matches, either as part of the starting 11 or coming on as a sub, which it would probably come on as a sub. It's possible, but we'll have to wait and see what do you guys think about a youth academy. Now, I do have a little bit of a secret weapon. I have a Southampton fan who is helping me and guiding me in the right direction. But I still want you guys at home to get involved, help me with transfers, formations, tactics, all stuff like that. Drop your comments down below letting you know if you, you know if I come up with an idea. Is it good? Is it bad? Have you got a better idea for it? Let me know. If you've got any challenges you want me to do, let me know down below. As we move over to brand exposure, sign one crucial first team player assigned to the midfield or forward position. Well, funny enough, one of the positions we're going for is a striker. So that should be no problem. Long term, it doesn't matter because it's within three seasons. We're only here for one. Continental success, there's no objectives. It doesn't matter what we do in the Community Shield if we were in it. It doesn't matter what we do in the Carabao Cup. They're not bothered. Domestic success. They want us to finish mid-table. We're currently obviously 16th just because it goes alphabetical order. Mid-table, I'm probably going to say, guys, is realistic for Southampton. I'll be happy if we get in the top 10. I'll be over the moon if we get in top 8. And if we were to finish in the top six, well, I'm just the best manager that you can get on the market, realistically. The Emirates FA Cup, they want us to reach the round of 16 stage, which I will talk about the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup a little later on. Long term, again, doesn't matter. It's within two seasons. We're only here for one season. And finally, financial. Keep player salary growth under 10%. Shouldn't be too difficult as long as we're not offering new contracts, which we won't be because we're only here for a year. And long term, again, it doesn't really matter. So there is the manager objectives done. We can go ahead and delete that. 
Now I think what's important, and probably the most important thing for a manager when he joins a new team, is meeting the squad, meeting the lads. So let's go ahead and take a little look at what we've got. So as we go over to the squad hub, we have Forster, Jack Rose, Alex McCarthy, and Angus Gunn, which currently right now, that young man right there, the English 22-year-old, is the man we have in goal, Angus Gunn. So he will have no problem. He will be getting his position in the team. Currently at right back, we have, in real life, I think they do play a Valerie, but we have Cedric on loan to Inter Milan, and we have Kane Ramsey, who's only overall 60. So right now, as I'm looking at that, I'm thinking Valerie is going to be the main starter, but we may look at improving, which again, we'll talk about transfers a little later on. As we move down to the centre-backs, well, we've got a full house of centre-backs. We have Yoshida, Vestergaard, Wesley Hode is out on loan. Alfie Jones is still here. Jack Stevens is still here. Bednarek, Clarera, which gives us one, two, three, four, five, six centre backs currently at the club and seven centre backs overall with one being out loan. So I think centre back wise, we're looking pretty solid. I'm probably going to play Vestergaard and Bednarek, and then I'd have Yoshida on the bench as backup. But I think Yoshida is how old now? 29 we probably maybe need to bring in another center back just to help them out a little bit moving on to the left back position now left back was dead easy we had someone called target but unfortunately he was bought just a few weeks ago by aston villa so it puts us down to ryan bertrand being at 78 overall which is fine but then we dropped down to sam mcqueen who's 66 and jake vokens who's 57 there's a big gap in a 12 rating drop from bertrand to McQueen again we may need to look at left back so right now we're looking at a right back we're looking at a left back and at the back end if we had a little bit of spare money left over we'd probably be looking at a centre back as we move into the midfielder position well we have plenty of midfielders we have I really don't want to screw up too many people's names but we have Harrison Reed who can play CDM and also right mid and we've got this man here now I really don't want to screw up his name but I'm going to go Romeo, Romeo, I'm going to say Romeo, Oriol Romeo, that's how we're going to pronounce his name. We don't actually play a CDM, but he can play centre mid and is one of the current starters in the Saints team. So I think he's probably definitely going to be in there. As we look at right mid, we've got Hesketh, who's out on loan right now at MK Dons. We have Johnson, who's a right mid, 19-year-old Englishman, only 61 overall. And then, of course, the man who has been here for a very long time, since 2011. Now, I want to play him, he's going to be one of the main players. But I don't think I want to play him out at the right mid. I might start him in pre-season at right mid. But I think he's certainly going to move into the centre mid. Because he's not one of the fastest. We may also need to look at bringing in a right mid. But bear in mind we don't have a lot of money. As we move down to some other centre mids. We've got this man here. Now I really again. So many teams have so many difficult players. When it comes to pronouncing them. But I'm going to go Hoybier. I think that's how you pronounce his name. pierre Emile. Hoybier. He is the captain. He's been there since 2016. He would be our other central, central midfielder with Ward Prowse. We've got Jordi Classy who's out on loan, so that doesn't matter too much. We could look at recalling if we need him. Stephen Davis also out on loan at Rangers. We could recall him if we need it. And because of the Saints fan that's helping me out, Mario Lamina doesn't get in the team anymore because he tried to force a transfer away from the Saints and now refuses to play for them. So we don't have Ward Prowse and Hoybier in the midfield. So unfortunately, if one of them got injured or couldn't play, we're going to have to play Mario Lamina. But I may well look at bringing one of the other centre mids back. Otherwise, we're going to have to look at buying one. And we only have £39 million to spend. We have this man here who is a new signing. He can play left mid and right mid. So I could try him out on the right mid position. And I'm just going to pretend like the J is silent. And I'm going to go Denepo. Musa Denepo, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, somebody help me out and tell me how to pronounce that. I'll certainly try and get all the players' names correct. But I'm going to say that Jay Silent, and I'm going to go Musa Denepo, who I'm probably going to play out on the right mid position more than the left mid, because I know a little further down we do have Nathan Redmond. Up next, we have Mohamed Elianusi, who again can play left mid and right mid. So it's now looking like, do we actually need to sign a right mid? when we potentially have two players there that can play right mid, as well as Ward Prowse, who obviously I've just said I'd rather move into the midfield. So we could have these two players playing out on the right mid, 
And then we've got that man there, Nathan Redmond, another English player, only 24 that can play out in the left mid position. We've got plenty of options here. We also have Buffal out on loan at RC Celta. We could bring them back if we needed them. Moving forward, we have the central attacking midfielder roles. We have Callum Slattery and we have Stuart Armstrong again. Both of these can play centre mid, so I may well drop them back into the centre mid so we don't have to bring Davis or Classy back. And we can have Hoybier, and we can also have... Who is the other central mid? They are Wall Prowse, and then we can play Slattery and Armstrong. The only problem is with Slattery, he's quite low in the overall right now, so Armstrong is probably more favoured to get into that central midfield position. As we move forward, we have one right winger, and Josh Sims. But luckily enough for us, he can play right mid. So I'm going to say now... We probably don't need to sign a right midfielder. We've got plenty to work with there. And that is exactly what we will look at doing. And we move on to the strikers. We've got four of them. We've got Oberfemi. I want to say I'll tell you pronounce his name. Danny Ings. Chi Adams. Marcus Barnes. Sorry, we've got more. Shane Long and Carrillo. Now, Carrillo's out on loan, so don't worry about him. I would stand right now is we will be playing Danny Ings and Che Adams. And then we'd have Shane Long as a backup. We could look at putting Oberfemi in there for some of the cup games. We could look at putting Marcus Barnes out on loan. We've met the lads. We've seen where the positives and negatives are amongst the team. I think a right back and left back looks like it must, or is a must, should I say. And then potentially another striker. Someone in the mid-70s upwards to kind of come in as backup for Ings or Che Adams. Because Shane Long at 73, he's age 31. He's only rotational. He is going to start dropping pretty early on with his age. Whereas Danny Ings and Che Adams, Danny Ings mid-20s, Che Adams coming into his early 20s. I think we definitely need a backup there. And a potentially around the same rating as Danny Ings would do us perfect. But as for all the transfers in today's episode, guys, there is going to be no transfers. What we're in fact going to do is I'm going to build a transfer list, show you guys who I've got on the list, and then you can decide who you think we should go in for. Or if you have anyone else you think we should buy at Southampton, let me know down below in the comment section. I'm not about keeping it realistic. I'm not about keeping it unrealistic. I'm happy to do with whatever you guys think is best for the team and best for the Southampton fans. Now, how it currently stands is Southampton's default is a 5-2-3. We have Redmond, Long and Sims up top. Hobier and Ward Prowse in the midfield. And then Bertrand, Vestergaard, Yoshida, Bednarek and Valerie at the back with Angus Gunn between the sticks. I think I'm going to change this up. Although Southampton do play that formation quite a lot, they tend to play a 4-4-2 a lot more. And I think by dropping... Four, uh, five at the back to four, it means we can have Yoshida on the bench to come on if Narek or Vestergaard are not fully fit. By playing that formation there, it leaves us no options in the centre-back role unless we bring on a young centre-back, which, to be honest, at the start of this career mode is not what we want to be doing. We want to try and win as much as we can, get as far as we can in competitions, and I think by not rotating the team enough and playing too many players in a certain position where we don't have a lot of players in that role, it's going to make it very difficult. So I'm now going to look over the team I'm going to leave this as a default, but I'm also going to make a 4-4-2 version. And then we can weigh up after playing pre-season whether we think it's better to play the 5-2-3 or the 4-4-2. Right, so you guys have just seen the 5-2-3. I've now made a 4-4-2, but the only change I've done to the 5-2-3 is I've brought Romeo in to the central midfield to play alongside Hobier and put Ward Prowse to the bench. If we flick across to the 4-4-2 flat, We've got Ings and Che Adams up top, Redmond, Hobier, Romeo, and Ward Prowse in the midfield. I'm trying Ward Prowse over on that right mid position for the first game. Bertrand, Vestergaard, Bednarek, Valerie at the back with Gun between the sticks, which is the team I'm going to play for our first game against Marseille. I think that's the right way to go. As for training, just because I don't know Southampton's team very well, I'm going to pick some players I want to train. But if you guys know any players that I should be training, let me know. So we're going to go with Che Adams because I want to make sure he's getting trained and can grow to the best potential he possibly can. So we're going to stick him on two because obviously we want to have an out-and-out -out striker up there with Danny Ings. And maybe if we can train him quick enough, we don't need to bring in another striker. But I'm still thinking we need a little bit of a backup. Well, Prowse, not too fussed about this man here. Dini I don't even know how you pronounce his name. Jinenepo? Denny po, I'll call him Denny po. Let's stick him on it because I think he is going to be our out-and-out -out right winger. Now what I want to do is look at the defenders. Could train Valerie. 
I think Valerie's the one to train, to be honest. I think he's got decent growth potential. And I think we need him to grow pretty quick, as he is out and out right back right now. So we need him to get into those, you know, mid-70s to help us, you know, win things and, and have a decent squad. So we'll simulate all them. We get a C, a D, a D, and two A's from Valerie, who've done very well in that right back position when it comes to player development. Now what we're going to do, guys, I'm going to get all the way to the game against Marseille. I'm planning to do the whole European International Cup, the whole preseason in this one episode. We're going to simulate the game against Marseille. If we win, I'm then going to simulate the second game and play the third. If we lose or draw to Marseille, then I'm actually going to play the second game just to make sure that we get through the group stages. So I'll now go and advance all the way to the Marseille game. The team's all rearing to go. We can simulate it, and fingers crossed we get our first win of this brand new career mode. So we're now at our first pre-season game against Marseille, and I am super pumped for this game. You guys have already seen the lineup, but we will go through it again. We're playing a 4-4-2, and up top, we've got Danny Ings and Che Adams linking up in the striker positions. Redmond, Hobierg, Romeo and Wal Prowse in the midfield. Bertrand at Vestergaard, Bednarek and Valerie at the back. With Angus Gunn between the sticks, it's our first game. It'd be nice if we could get off to a decent win as a new manager at Southampton. I think this is going to be very similar to the Ajax road to glory that you guys loved so much. I don't think it's going to be like the Liverpool or the City Karimos where we had lots of money to spend and such a good squad. This team is going to need a lot of adjusting, a lot of building and a lot of training. But I think we can get there. But let's go ahead and get these players warmed up to kick off against Marseille. Can we get our first win under the belt? Hubo can picks up a yellow card for Marseille in the first minute. James Wall Prowse has just scored in the 14th minute to put us 1-0 up. Unfortunately, Jermaine has scored back in the 22nd to take it back to 1-1. Valerie scores our right back scores in the 39th. Only 66 rated and he scored happy days. Yoshida on for Vestergaard. Payet now come on. Long on for Bednarek, so we're playing three up top now. Saw on for Thorvan. Danny Ing scores the third goal in the 75th. And it looks like we are, as the referee blows for full time, we're going to go on to beat Marseille 3-1 in our first preseason game. It's a great way to start. We've kicked off preseason in the best way we possibly could. And we managed to get Valerie, Warprout and Danny Ings all on the score sheet. And it looked to me like it was a little bit of a decent, comfortable win there. Right, guys, and here we are, ready for our second pre-season game. This time round, we're facing off against Werder Bremen, who did draw to Hoffenheim, which leaves us currently top of our group with three points. We just beat Marseille, and because we won that game, it means that we'll be simulating the game against Werder Bremen, hopefully to get another win under the belt. And if we get another win at Hoffenheim and Marseille drew, we could then simulate the third game, and then we can play the last two games. Now, I may as well tell you guys now, Every single episode after pre-season, so as from episode 2 onwards, we're going to have four games every episode. Two we're going to play, two we're going to simulate. Now, I know that seems like a lot of games, but you've got to understand, guys, if you haven't read it on the community page, you definitely should go and read it. I can only upload 15 videos after this video goes up on Wednesday, the 14th of August. There's only 15 more uploads until FIFA 20. And I want to get through a whole season of Southampton. So it's just what we've got to do. I have made one change to the team. We've took out the man Vestergaard and brought Yoshida in. Because unfortunately he's not fully fit. We're sticking with the 4-4-2 flat. We're going with Danny Ings linking up with Che Adams up top. Redmond. I really don't want to mess this up. Hoybierg. Romeo. Warprouse in the midfield. Bertrand, Yoshida, Bednarek and Valerie at the back. With Angus Gunn between the six. It'll take me a little bit of time of getting used to pronouncing their name, guys. But I'm sure by episode three or four, I should be fluent in pronouncing the Southampton's squad. No problem. Let's go ahead and get these players warmed up. Hopefully get a second win under our belt. They drew 1-1 with Hoffenheim. Klassen picks up a yellow card in the first minute for Werder Bremen. 20 minutes in, nothing else has happened just yet. Hoffenheim have gone 1-0 up there against Marseille. Fast approaching half time here, only five minutes to go. We're now into the second half and still nothing's happened. Shane Long's come on for Che Adams. Lamina on for Romeo. Come on, lads, surely. We don't want to draw here yet. Klassen's just scored for, scored for Werder Bremen, so we are now 1-0 down. We've only a few minutes to go. Sadly, we're not going to find that goal to bring it back to level terms 1-1. Klassen does score in the 72nd minute. And unfortunately for us, Werder Bremen do go on to beat us 1-0. Hoffenheim beat Marseille 2-1 as they scored their second goal in the 69th minute. Seemed like an easy game there for Hoffenheim, which means we will have to play our third game. Now, just to make sure, I'll check when we get back to Central... But I'm pretty sure we're going to have to play this last game against Hoffenheim to make sure we guarantee us a place in the next stages and we get through our group stage. 
Well, after two preseason games, I'm certainly starting to see that the Southampton squad is not great with fitness. As you can see, for the lineup we are putting out against Hoffenheim, there's not many players there apart from the three that I brought back into the team, which is Denny Poo, Elanusi, and Vestergaard, as well as Gunn, I suppose. We've only got four players there that are fully fit. But I'm going out with this team. We are going to be playing this game because, as you can see here, if we don't beat Hoffenheim, we don't get a place in the next stages. Where the Bremen and Hoffenheim would go through, we would be knocked out with Marseille. I want to do my best. It's an opportunity for me to now play with the lads and try and get the win over Hoffenheim. If we do, we move up to six points. And depending on, well, actually, where the Bremen are going through, no matter what, even if they lose to Marseille, Marseille would only get three points. So it's just a chance of us and where the Bremen going through, or it's Hoffenheim and where the Bremen, regardless where the Bremen are now going through as they are playing Marseille, who are currently on zero points. And apart from the four players, three of them that I've just brought in, being Denny Poo, Elanusi and Vestergaard, then you've also got Gunn. They are the only four players that are fully fit, so I'm hoping this team can do a job against Hoffenheim. If Marseille won, they could get three points, but they can't get into the top two. So it's either going to be Hoffenheim and where the Bremen, or if we beat Hoffenheim, we have to beat them. To then finish potentially top of the group or second to get through to the next stages. But the lineup we are putting out, we got Danny Ings and Che Adams up top in the striker position, Elanusi, Hoberg, Romu, Digenepo in the midfield, Bertrand, Vestergaard, Bednarek, and Valerie at the back with gun between the sticks. I am really struggling with those two midfielders. Romu, I just need to drill that into my mind. Hoiberg, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Hoiberg. I keep calling him Hoberg. It's Hoiberg, Brad. Get it into your head. Sorry about that, guys. I know you're probably cringing at how I'm pronouncing the names. I am trying my best. I'm looking forward to our first game here. We're actually getting in the hot seat and getting to play against Toppenheim now. And hopefully in 90 minutes' time, we will have got that one, that win, that one, that win. And we will be getting through to the next stages of the pre-season tournament. It's our first official game in charge that we actually get to play. We had to control the players. And I'm just hoping we can get the win because draw or lose and we are out of the European International Cup. We're out of pre-season, which isn't the worst thing that could happen. If we're out, we're out. It gives us a couple of weeks till the, pre, uh, till the Premier League kicks off. But I'd like to get this win, but it'll be, it'll be good for us now to get this kicked off with Danny Ings. We can get control of the players, see where the strengths are in the team. And hopefully, most importantly, we can get the win and continue our pre-season journey. The Jennifer isn't in behind. Coming forward now. Ball into the middle. We're going to get this now with El Nusi. Going to play it out from the back. It's a terrible pass. Bertrand's going to have to try and win this. Let's get a foot in here, lads. Big save there from Angus Gunn. We're going to follow up. It's in the back of the net. It's 1 0 off and I'm. We defended shockingly there. Absolutely terribly. I've only got myself to blame. Angus Gunn made a great save, but unfortunately. Only palmed it away. This shot here palmed it into the path of the Hoffenheim man. Who then hit it very hard. It comes in off the crossbar. To shame it was a little bit harder. It probably would have went over. But it rattles the top of the crossbar. And bounces into the back of the net. We are 1-0 down after 11 minutes. And this is not the start we wanted. And not a great start to our Southampton career. I think we are going to be going at half time here ladies and gentlemen. 1-0 down. And I'm not really sure what the game plan is right now. Bednarek intercepts that one. And we are going in, sadly, at 1-0 down to Hoffenheim. It's not quite the result we wanted to be going in with, I think. Say in the last 10, 15 minutes, we started stepping it up. I think, realistically, I'm struggling just pronouncing names, which is putting me off a little bit. So I am going to now look at making some changes. I'm going to take Hoiberg off and bring on... I'm going to bring Armstrong on in the midfield. Later, probably going to bring Warprouse on for Romeo. I think for now, I think I'm going to stick with the team I've got. Mm, yeah, I'm going to stick with the team I've got. We can make as many substitutions as we want in pre-season, but I think for now, just bringing Armstrong in that midfield may well help us out a little bit. I was just getting we used to pronouncing Hoiberg's name. It's the other man I can't pronounce, but we have now taken him off. Chadham's going to play that out wide now. Looking for DeGenepo. If we can keep this in, and he has done. Nice little ball in now towards the middle. It's clear the way. Let's try and win that with Valerie. Play it in now to Armstrong. Who's going to hit it first time? Oh, it was close. What a strike from Armstrong. 
Sadly, the outside of the post hits it first time. Danny Ings ducks under the ball. It was bending away. Just sadly didn't bend into the inside net. It hit the post and followed outwards. That was unlucky, but what a start for Armstrong. Ward Prowse going to get it onto his right foot. Ward Prowse lets one fly. Takes a reflection. We've got a corner. Can Vestergaard put this one home? Even if he does, I'm not sure we're going to be able to get back into this game. Ball in. Vestergaard's going to be there. He doesn't jump for it. It's clear the way. Armstrong going to chase this one down. Get everyone in the box. Armstrong, nice little ball in now for Che Adams to Ward Prowse, who hit it. Another big save from Stoles. It's not meant to be. Vestergaard, just score this one for me, son. You are massive. Put this one out. Ball in. Nah, it's clear the way. Here's Sims. Redmond. First time on his left foot. It's an easy save. We are unfortunately out of pre-season, ladies and gentlemen. I've done everything I can. The referee blows his full-time whistle. It certainly taught me that it's going to be a, a difficult job coming in at the Saints. You know, with Ajax, with Liverpool, with City, we won the pre-season, no problem. It was a walk in the park. It certainly wasn't that with the Saints. And sadly, we are knocked out of the European International Cup after sadly losing 1-0 to Hoffenheim, who were a great team. And certainly, probably, in the first... 60 minutes deserved to win, I'd say, in the last 20 minutes. We upped our game. We had plenty of chances. I'm not sure what the stats are going to say. Yeah. 11 shots, 8 on target to their 4 shots, 2 on target. We we played well. We played well. Musa De Genepo picks up man of the match with a 7.8 rating. 7.8 is very poor. If we're not picking up man of the match with 8 point something or 9 point something, it does go to show that, you know, we did have a poor game. The players didn't play well. But as for on paper, I'm sure you guys agree at home, we probably deserve to win that game. We sadly don't. But we're going to keep our heads held high as we can now look forward in the next couple of weeks to be getting the Premier League kicked off. So is the new Southampton manager not the best start in our new career? It certainly wasn't as I expected. I didn't expect, to be honest, to get knocked out of pre-season. We managed to play three games. We won the first that was simulated 3-1. We lost the second that was simulated 1-0. And then we played the game against Hoffenheim and sadly also lost 1-0. It did open my eyes to a lot of what we have lied ahead of us at Southampton. I know that the team right now has a few cracks in that we need to fill in, smooth over and replaster. We need to sort the squad out. We definitely need to look at some transfers in the next episode. But I think it is going to be a little bit of change from the Liverpool career mode. The one-season wonder at Manchester City the Ajax road to glory, it is going to be different because we don't have such a solid squad to start with. We don't have lots of funds that we can just plumb it into new players. We've got to be tactical here. We're going to have to use the youth academy. We've got to make sure we're training young players that can grow nicely for us. I certainly need to learn to pronounce some of these names. El Yanusi, I've got that now. Hobier, I've got that now. I always struggle with this one, but it's Oriol... How, see, I keep saying Romulu, but that's Romulu Lukaku. Romeo? I'm just not sure. I will learn that for the next episode. And then the man on the right mid, the Genepo, Genepo, Denepo. I, I really don't know how you pronounce these things. But I will certainly do my best, guys, to find it online and learn how to pronounce these names. I will certainly try my best. But for now, you've just got to bear with me. Obviously, some of them are difficult to pronounce. Some of you may support Southampton. Some of you may watch Southampton and have heard their name on the TV so you know how to pronounce it. But for me, there's certainly some difficult names in there to pronounce. But I'll certainly do my best to get that better for episode two. Now, speaking of episode two, obviously, earlier in the episode, we talked about every single episode going forwards is going to have four games in it. Two we're going to play, two we're going to simulate. That is going to start from episode three because I've had a look what is in line for episode two. We've got Burnley at home, Everton away from home, Leicester at home, and then the 31st of August, which of course is the transfer deadline day. Now, because the transfer deadline day normally takes up quite a lot of time, in episode two, I'm only going to play three games. I'm going to simulate the game against Burnley. I'm going to play the game away from home to Everton. I'm going to play the game against Leicester City at home. And then we're going to finish off the August transfer window. Because like I said, the transfer window normally takes a good bit of time. And we will be talking about transfers in just a moment. But then as we move into the month of September, which will be episode three. 
right now how it stands but i know this is going to get changed up as we go later into the year because we've got other competitions which again we'll talk about silverware and competitions in just a moment but for september we probably play against palace simulate brighton play against liverpool and simulate against wolves but i can say this all the way through the whole year but we know that games are going to change they're going to get moved into a different month but as we talk about silverware it's a little bit different to what I've done before because with City and Liverpool, we were in Champions League, which is another competition. We had the UEFA Super Cup, which was another competition. But with Southampton, we have three to worry about. We've got the Premier League, which straight off the bat, if I finish anywhere between 14th and 8th mid-table, I'll be very happy. If we finish between 8th and 6th, I'll be over the moon. And if we finish in the top six, well, what can I say? Southampton have got the man for the job in massive, Brad, because just from playing pre-season there, I understand it's going to be a difficult path. This We haven't got a lot of funds to plummet into players. We have to work, train, develop the squad that we've got. So it is going to be a challenge, but I look forward to this challenge. In the Carabao Cup, I'm probably going to simulate every single game and hope that we get to the quarterfinals. If we get to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup, I will then play the quarters, play the semis, and the final if we manage to get through and try and win it. With the FA Cup, I'm going to simulate the first two games in the FA Cup, and then I'm going to play the third game. And if we win the third game, we should, should then be through to the quarter finals of the FA Cup. So I'm going to simulate the first couple of games, depending on you know what round it is and stuff like that. But for me. I need to focus on the Premier League and I need to focus on the FA Cup. I think they're the important ones that Southampton players, Southampton fans would like to go far in. And I think as a manager, that's what I want to do. I want to try and finish, you know, if we could finish in the top eight, the top six, that would be absolutely unbelievable. Between eighth and 14th, I'd be comfortable if that wouldn't be a bad season for me at Southampton. And if we could get to the quarter or the semi-finals of the FA Cup, that would also be unbelievable. But I just thought I'd tell you guys where we're at with competitions and silverware what i'd like to try and win carabao cup i'm not too fussed on so we may simulate a lot of those games until we get to the quarterfinals but we'll have to see obviously in the episode what the four games are obviously if it's four premier league games i'm probably more likely to play the harder away games simulate the home games you know we could have a couple of carabao cup and fa cup games thrown in there which i'll have to make the decision when we come to that moving on from silverware we've met the lads we've met the team I certainly need to learn some names, that's for sure. I've told you about doing face cam. Obviously, one of these episodes towards the end of the season is going to have face cam, one or two of them. We've just talked silverware in competitions. The last thing to talk about now for me is transfers. And this is where it becomes a little bit difficult. We know straight away when we look at this squad, this lineup here, that we will be looking to play with throughout the whole of season one. We know that Valerie, okay, he's only young. But at 68 rated, and we got Ryan Bertrand on the left back position at 78, he's 10 ratings below. That's probably not good enough realistically. If we go back to the centre, you can see that we are training him and he's already up two ratings. But he's just not good enough. So I think a right back is a must, must position that we look at bringing someone in for. And then we'll have Valerie as the backup. The same when we switch to left back. We obviously have Ryan Bertrand right now. I don't think we need to improve that position, but I think we need like a Valerie to sit behind Bertrand, to be on the Bertrand's wing around, you know, a 69, 70, 71 rated, that's got a little bit of growth potential, that by the end of the season might be 76 or 77, and can just sit in for Bertrand if he's not fully fit. Like in the midfield, we've got Vestergaard and we've got Bednarek. We've also then got Yoshida as a backup to come in. We need to make sure we've got a good bit of depth in this team because we're not in a huge amount of competitions, but we are going to have a lot of games. And I want to make sure that we've got pretty much a backup for every single position. So Valerie is our only right back right now. We definitely need to sign someone there. Bertrand, we definitely need a backup. And the other position for me is striker. Obviously, right now we have Ings and Che Adams up top. We've got Shane Long as the other striker. For me, Shane Long, 31 years old, 71 overall rated, he's just not good enough. We need someone up top with either Ings or Che Adams, and then Ings or Adams to come off the bench as a bit of a super sub and try and do something for us. Shane Long, for me, is just not that. I want him to be like our fourth striker if we, you know, we can play him in the Carabao Cup or something like that. So what we're going to do for the 
sorry, what we're going to do over the transfers, a little bit different this time around, guys. Want to try new things with different career modes. What you'll see here is some right backs and some strikers. Go down to the description and comment section now and vote for which right back you'd like me to sign in episode two. We'll go through the right backs, but there's going to be a second straw poll regarding the strikers. So I have picked some right backs and some strikers. A few of them being realistic and have been linked with Southampton and a few of them just out there because I think it might be a good option. You're going to vote on the straw poll. Whichever player wins, we're going to sign. If there's some reason why we can't sign that player, whoever won second on the straw poll is then going to be signed. But you guys are going to choose the right back and the striker. But what I also want you to do is drop some comments down below about left backs. I'm not going to do a straw poll on left backs. I just want to see you guys recommend me a load of left backs. And if you're scrolling through the comment section now and you see someone's recommended a left back and you're like, you know what, he's good, you should get him. Hit the thumbs up on their comment. Comment on it saying this is a great player or this is a, a good option for Brad to bring in. And let me know some left backs. If you guys don't let me know any left backs, I'll take it upon myself to sign one. But for now, let's jump back to the right back position. We've got Kevin. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Massive Brad in the tongue twisters again. Kevin Mabu. Ma no. How are we going to pronounce this? Kevin Babu? Is it maybe a, a silent M? Kevin Babu. We'll go with Babu. Right back plays for BSC Young Boys. Again, read a lot about him. He's got great potential and he could be a great option to come in and sit ahead of Valerie. Moving down the list. Ah, this is where it just gets ridiculous. So just on how I think this is pronounced. Jao Kim Mele. I'm going to say Mele. And even to search for him, because he's, if you look at his surname, the A and the E is together, you can't search for that. So I had to find, the, find him when I searched for him. Jao Kim, I had to put that in to find him. He's from KRC Genk. And I'm going to say his na name is Mele. That's what we're going to say. If I'm saying any names wrong in today's episode, guys, just correct me down below. Kyle Walker Peters. Now, unfortunately... I added him to the list before. He's now joined Fulham. So he is going to be removed from the list. So the only three players now in the straw poll are going to be Kevin Babu, Melee, and Reese James. Now the reason I put Reese James in there is because I've never played with him before. He's meant to be a real good up-and-coming English player. He's meant to be unbelievable at right back, very fast, great at slide tackles. And you can see his summary his acceleration, sprint speed, and strength. And I like that. He's going to be strong being able to battle people off the ball. And he's got quick speed and acceleration to get off the mark and get up the right side of the pitch. So Reese James is the third and final right back. So you'll find the straw poll down below now with those three players in it. Click the straw poll, vote for one of them. And then in episode two, we will look at buying the highest voted right back. Moving on to the striker position. Now, obviously, I've mentioned, guys, there's no left backs here. So it's your job to find me a left back that's not going to cost too much money. I'd like him between, say, 69 to 72, 73 rated so he can sit in behind Bertrand, go under his wing. He's got good potential to grow. And let me know down below in the comment section. As we move on to striker, a few of these and a lot of the, all the right backs, sorry, have still got a question mark next to their name. By episode two, we'll know a little bit more about their overall and the price they're going to cost. But the strikers, we've got Iniaki Williams, who has just recently signed a nine-year, that's correct, you heard right, a nine-year contract, nine years. He's there now till 2028. It sounds shocking, but if you go and Google his name, he just signed a nine-year contract. The first time a contract has ever been more than six years, and it's for that man there, Iniaki Williams. And I understand why they want to keep him, but I think he needs to go to a different league, and he needs to show everyone exactly what talent he's got because he is an unbelievable player. And I'm sure one day he will be in the Premier League. And there's a potential chance that we, Southampton, bring in Iaki Williams to the Saints. It's a possibility. I don't know how much he's going to cost just yet, though. The next man is Diego Yota. Again, the reason he's in here is he's a player that is meant to be really good. And I've never had the opportunity to play with him. So I thought... Diego Yota from Wolverhampton Wonders, bring him in at the Saints, he's nice and quick, work nicely up there with Che Adams and Danny Ings, I think he could be a great fit 
for Southampton. Mario Balotelli, again, a man that over the last three or four years is just getting past pillar to post. He went from Liverpool to Nice to Marseille. And I think he's about to go to Fiorentina. He's moved constantly for the last five years. Teams will only offer him a one-year contract, pay him about 100 grand a week, and then he moves on. I think bringing him back to the Premier League, he was unbelievable at Manchester City. He was unbelievable at Inter Milan. Not so great at Liverpool, and his career started going downhill. But can we bring the Italian stallion, Mario Balotelli, age 28, can we bring him back to the Premier League, put him up top with Danny Ings at an overall of 82, and potentially bring his career back on track. Again, decision you guys will have to make. There's a straw poll of all of these strikers. Go and vote for which striker you think would be a great fit to bring to Southampton. The next man that could cost a lot of money. I'm not sure why he added them. I was simply looking through strikers, and I seen Diego Costa. He's age 29, so he is getting on a little bit. Oh, it's too late. The players just recently joined this club and won't move again. Okay, so we can remove Diego Costa. We're not going to be able to bring him in. So again, Diego Costa won't be on the straw poll. Moving down from Mario Balotelli to another man at Divock Origi. And unfortunately, it's the same situation with him. He's now gone to VFB Stuttgart. He's not at Liverpool. He's just recently joined. We've missed out on him. So we will remove him from the list. And the last striker, we went from having like six or seven strikers then to only four now. The last man is Latoro Martinez, who is at Inter Milan. In fact, has he just joined? He has just joined a new club. So again, Martinez is now not an option for us to bring in. What should I do here? Because now I've just missed out on a load. Mario Balotelli's only just gone to Marseille. We just missed out on a load of strikers. That's a slight problem. Right, guys, just scrap everything I've just said. A minute ago, I've added everyone back now. We got rid of Kyle Walker-Peters. We just deleted Mario Balotelli. We deleted Diego Costa. We deleted Divock, Ar Divock Origi. And we got rid of Latoro Martinez. Now, what I'm going to do is, if the player has just joined the club, then we'll leave them on. If it's like Divock Origi, in fact, we can leave everyone. I've got a better idea. Scrap everything I've said. These are all your strikers, okay? There's going to be a straw poll down below with Iniaki Williams, Diego Yota, Mario Palatelli, Diego Costa, Divock Origi, and Latoro Martinez. Go and vote on that straw poll. Let's say someone like Latoro Martinez wins the vote. He's just joined into Milan, so he won't move again. But can we maybe try and... We can try to loan him. So what we'll do is, you guys vote for these six strikers... And these four right backs. And whoever wins, we'll try and get whether that's buying them or taking them on loan. And if we can't get the top player on the straw poll vote, so let's say for right back, Reese James won. And we couldn't get Reese James. And then second was Babu. We go for Babu. If we can't get Babu and third was Marle, then we go for Marley. If fourth was Walker Peters, we go for him. We'll go down the list, but that's how we're going to do it now. Straw poll for right back. Them four there. Straw poll for striker, those six there. If you guys have any other recommendations for right backs, strikers, and definitely the left back position, let me know down below in the comment section, okay? But that's how we're going to do it now, guys. You've got your right backs, you've got your strikers, and it needs to smash a load of left backs down below in the comment section and let me know who we should buy at left back. But I think we've pretty much covered everything. Obviously, we know that I updated all the transfers in the Premier League, so they've all got the latest signings and they've all moved on. Players that they sold recently. We've talked about, obviously, the silverware and what competitions we're in and what we'd like to do there. We've met the team, we've met the lads. Yeah, there's a bit of work to do there, without a doubt, but I'm ready for this challenge. I told you guys that face cam will be coming later on into this season, so definitely keep your eye open for that. And I think the last thing to tell you guys is the transfer budget is 40.68 million. We've got a wage budget of 86,000. But let's just remember, sometimes a challenge makes it that little bit more fun. And that is exactly what I plan to do with this final FIFA 19 series. But that is going to be for today's episode, guys. And if you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And I've been Master Brad. Peace out.